you've made it to part four of our practice exam review series. Let's get straight into it and look at the next question on the practice exam. Question 12. Using examples, describe how the relationship between audiences and the media has changed over time. Consider factors such as the production, distribution and or consumption and reception of media. So responses to this question should explore the ways in which audience interaction with the media has changed over time from a more linear model to a more interactive one. Responses may explore examples such as the rising use of social media, the changing of technologies or the ease of self-distribution. I think in this question you should definitely talk about the broadcast era and how the media had a dominant control or influence, I should say, over its audience. The audience didn't really have a place or a way of communicating to the larger population, with perhaps the exception of letters to the editor, but even then only a few got picked and that was based on what the editor of the newspaper was happy to publish. So again, the power was still in the hands of the media owners. So people just had to accept blindly what the media outlets were telling them. And if they had questions about it, there wasn't much they could do to counter it. Whereas in today's society, we've got the immediate feedback through social media and all the technologies that have been developed to create new ways of disseminating news and information and ways of uh, fact checking and so on and so forth. And how easy is it these days to set up your own media uh, platform and have your own say? And so that therefore brings into question the quality of the information being sent out because it's so easy for anyone to say anything about anything without necessarily having the facts straight, so on and so forth. So these are some of the things you could talk about in a question like this. To get full marks for this sort of question, you want to make sure that your response has a clear link between two specific examples that show the difference in the production, distribution, or consumption and reception of media products from different time periods. So don't just think about production, don't just think about distribution, think about all of those things, consumption, reception, try and consider all of it. Examples should be specific and detailed and explore the ramifications of these changes. Don't just state what the changes are, but talk about the ramifications. What's the good that's come out of it? What's the bad that's come out of it? What's, what are the dangers of social media? What are the dangers of all the technology? So on and so forth. Question 13 is the penultimate question. In other words, the second last. So describe one way that the relationship between audiences and the media is regulated and explain the challenges with this type of regulation. So responses to this question or a question like it should include a description of the type of regulation that it is, um, who the regulatory body is and how the regulation is enacted. When explaining the challenges of a type of regulation, responses should include that type of regulation and its weaknesses such as how audiences may avoid it or how media organisations may exploit it. So a question like this could be divided into two parts as far as marking goes. So for this one, it's given three marks for just your description of the regulation. So you would get three marks for a response that includes a detailed and specific example of media regulation. That includes the type of regulation, who the regulatory bodies are, and how the regulation is enacted. And then the second part has three marks for a response that includes a specific and or detailed way or ways in which the type of regulation explained may not have the desired effect. The response would specifically name a way that the audience would avoid the regulation or how it may be exploited by a media organisation. And I'm going to let you do the heavy lifting for this question and go to lessonbucket.com and have a look at their page on media regulation. Re Cut! Take two. And have a look at their page on media regulate. Cut. Take three. And have a look at their page on media regulation. There is so much to go through there. Looks at the national classification scheme. Looks at classification controversies or controversies. It's got lots and lots of links to those. It talks about the Australian Communication and Media Authority. It looks at the Advertising Standards Board. And there's a little summary sheet there as well. So there's so much there you can look at to get your head around regulation if you haven't already done so. Let's just take a moment to recap what exactly is agency and what is control. Sounds like a good idea. 
So agency refers to the ability to act and make choices. When a media audience, producer or institution has agency, they feel they can use a medium or platform in any way they choose. To express themselves, to use the media for a specific purpose, to communicate a message, whatever it is, people with agency have the ability to make choices about things. They're not forced into something. They have that freedom to choose. Control refers to the ability to exert power over somebody else's actions or choices. When a media audience, producer or institution has control, they may be able to shape messages, direct how the media is used, or even manipulate audiences to believe certain things. There is a tension between these two ideas, agency and control, and that can be seen in many different audience relationships with the media. Many social media platforms sell the illusion of agency to an audience when in fact, the use of the system, maybe such as Facebook for example, well, it's tightly controlled. You don't get to see all the same things as everybody else. They control what you can see based on algorithms and all that sort of thing. And I'm not just picking on Facebook. There's lots of them. In turn, some audiences enjoy subverting the systems of mediums or platforms to give themselves more agency. Media institutions are often fighting for more agency in how they interact with different regulation systems that attempt to control them. This tension between agency and control is one way to explain the audience's relationship with the media, which is something that has changed dramatically over time. I mean, think of the relationship your parents had with the media when they were teenagers. Before social media, television was the dominant form of media consumption. Your parents had little agency over the programs they watched. Their choice of stations was perhaps five, and their content was always produced for a mass audience. Television stations had significant control over what was shown and when it was shown. This control was tempered by the Australian government as well, which issued television licenses so long as stations met certain regulatory conditions, such as who owned the station, how much Australian content was shown, and the time of day certain programs were broadcast. This still exists on free-to-air TV to a great extent today as well. But we have so many other choices now, don't we? Audiences now have significantly more agency over how their media is used. Instead of just five or six television channels to choose from, you have an almost unlimited choice of content, both on TV, through a host of other mediums. But, you are still controlled by these various platforms in terms of content ownership, terms and conditions, and the limitations of the platform itself. So there's a whole heap of things to consider when considering the relationship between agency and control. Last question, question 14. Today there are new ways that audiences can consume and receive media, which has an effect on the level of agency that audiences now have within the media landscape. Discuss ways that specific audiences currently have agency over their consumption and reception of media and the issues that this agency can raise. Provide the following when answering this question. Detailed examples of ways that specific audiences have agency over the media they consume. A discussion of the opportunities of this type of agency or choice for the named audiences and a discussion of legal or ethical issues that may also arise with these types of consumption. This is a big question worth 12 marks. If you get a question like this, you really need to plan it out carefully. And with a question like this, it's easy to get a little bit lost in knowing really what you're writing about. So remember, this question is about ethics and legal issues. That's the focus of this question. Responses to this question should explore the connection between ways that audiences can consume media, how these affect an audience's agency within the media landscape, and the ethical and legal issues associated with these processes. Responses should include at least two examples. Examples may include issues surrounding smartphone apps, and sexting and cyberbullying, the use of illegal streaming and torrent sites, the use of online streaming services such as Netflix, iView or Template, the use of music streaming services such as Spotify and so on and so on. To get a 9 to 12 mark response for a question like this, it would need to include a comprehensive discussion of audience agency and insightful analysis of ethical and legal issues in the consumption and reception of media products. A response in this range would include at least two examples of audience agency in a media context. The specific audiences would be named in the response and would be dependent of the media. For example, it could discuss teenagers using social media or children using streaming video apps. The type of agency would also be clearly named, such as the ability for audiences to share, inform, arrange or choose the media they consume. A discussion of opportunities in this score range, 9 to 12, would explore the benefits that this type of agency may have for the named audience. 
such as socialising abilities, ability to communicate, access to a variety of content, or ease of use. Discussions of legal or ethical issues in this score range between 9 and 12 would include specific examples of issues from the named audience, media industry, or society arising from this audience agency. Statistics or case studies would strengthen these examples. These discussions would not dismiss these fears completely, nor would they buy into them completely. Rather, they would give a balanced view of what the media means to society. The most similar question to this from last year's exam is this one right here. And I, again, highly recommend you go and have a look at Brett Lamb's playlist of exam practice questions and check out what he has to say about this one. It's a big one. It's a doozy. Don't miss that one. So that's the end of part four of our review of the practice exam with a few extra bits thrown in. I hope it was useful. I hope it wasn't too boring. I hope I kept it interesting. And if you haven't watched all of them or if you want to start over, now would be a great time. Here's a link to some more videos. Thanks. Bye-bye.